Hey viewers, Peter here. Legal research and writing. And today's topic is on legal writing skills. As Margaret Hannon puts it, you must write effectively, you must write clearly, and you must write persuasively. But what are the writing skills meant for lawyers? Specific legal writing. That doesn't mean that it is from the extraterrestrial. It doesn't mean that it is something so special that you cannot even imagine or feel like fitting. It is just the question of writing in the context of law and making it effective, making it clear and making it persuasive. In order to do this, you need skills. That's why legal writing mechanics can help you to get nuts and bolts of law and the legal practice, the techniques required. The tool of a lawyer is sitting well in his capacity to write, that is from Lord Denning. And your capacity to write a letter or to write in a way that is effective, clear and persuasive is what again shall amount to your success in the profession of the legal service as you desire. Again, it is very important to know that Writing is communication par excellence, and it used to be by handwriting, but nowadays, from typewriters of once upon a time, we are in the world of computer. Computer, which is known in French as ordinateur, is meant to organize our work, to do a number of things for us automatically with less energy, less input, but with some high quality standard. But remember, even this may not be perfect. Practice makes perfect. The skills I want to begin with, number one, the grammar, grammatical rules in terms of the nouns, the verbs, adjectives, adverbs, pronouns, and also the syntax and the structuring of the grammar is very important and critical. And remember, poor grammar is tantamount to poor writing and tantamount to being ineffective and unclear and also unpersuasive. And that one can work against you, not in your favor. For the interest of time, we go rapidly. Number two, we look at punctuations, even where you place comma, semicolon, colon, where you put hyphen, where you breathe, and where you put spacing, and where you put full stop, matter in legal writing. It may sound that simple, it may sound as a joke, but for you to get going, make sure that the grammar and the punctuations are well taken care of. Number three, mind about spellings. Even if you have automatic spelling machine, you have that application, spelling words for you, remember to edit that and go through it and make sure that your spelling is up to the standard required by the bundle of authorities recommended by the Attorney General's office but also by a scholar, the University of Oxford standard for citing of legal authorities. These are things we need to know, but practice makes better, reading makes better, going to the law library, looking at the print texts and journals, but also electronic and media texts and journals are very important. Reading cases will be like your daily bread. Lawyers 
learn and master the game by practicing it. Another tool I want you to get here is that be careful about citations and plagiarism. What we write is not our own making. When we write about facts, we must be exact and we must stick to those facts without adding our own thinking or our own emotions. We may be knowledgeable, but try not to provide any judgment on what you are writing because that one will contaminate the quality of the fact. It may end up in misrepresentation of the facts, misquotation of the facts, and it may work against you, not for you, and that must be avoided. When we talk of plagiarism, plagiarism simply means that you are using somebody's work or ideas or writings without permission or without authority. That is copyright violation. But moreover, plagiarism is also about how you cite that work in your work. How do you bring somebody's work into your work and still remain justified and legitimate? That is what matters. Remember, plagiarism is also regulated by law. And if found, the fines can as well be exorbitant and out of imagination. How we represent facts, how we relate those facts to our legal work matters because any mistake, any misplacement of punctuations or any poor grammar can as well work against you. It is also very important to make it clear here that your success in reading law or studying law and success in the legal practice shall depend on the quality of writing, legal writing. Lawyers do write a lot. They write essays, they write agreements for their clients and they're paid for that. They write contracts, they write treaties. They also draft legislation and they're paid for that. Lawyers write so much, they write briefs and notes that are used for the court. They write plans that they use for filing in court. They also write motions of applications to court. And also they write letters addressed to somebody who is supposed to read, a fellow lawyer, a judge, a magistrate, or maybe attorney general, or maybe inspector general, or somebody in the security. Lawyers do write on a daily basis. So don't fear writing, but fear writing poorly and ineffectively and unclearly and arguably writing in a way that is not persuasive. Because your writing is what will portray and tell to the reader who you are, your personality, but also your qualification and your knowledge. Since we don't meet people physically frequently, we meet them in their writings. Avoid using shortcuts. Avoid using social media language or a language as shame or colloquial language, but professional language. Don't use social media texts or don't even cite them because they are not legal authorities. Don't cite anything from TikTok and don't cite anything from Instagram, WhatsApp, Twitter or any, however good it looks. But your citations must come from authorities and legal documents that are officially published and can be traced, 
can be tracked down and are referenced and also are verifiable and accountable. It's about being accountable for what you write. Make writing concise, that means short, clear, effective, and persuasive. As you can see it in the writing mechanics by Margaret Hannon from Michigan University School of Law, but also from the Legal Writing Handbook by Kure Oates. It is always in good faith, in good taste, to see how you present yourself. And the writing must also be respectful, but also must have some humility. I stand to be corrected. That is a guide. I stand to be guided. I stand to be directed by you. I stand to be told. This is a language that is founded in the legal fraternity, as we have seen in the previous video presentation. That doesn't show ignorance. It doesn't show you are stupid or you are weak. On the contrary, it shows that you are strong, powerful, and unchallengeable. That is the wisdom in legal practice that is seen in the legal writing. And remember Lord Denning from the British jurisdiction who has left a very, very important message for all of us. Write clearly. Make your writing short, but effective, clear, and persuasive. That is about legal writing. And it is also about closing up on the beginning of the entire conversation around legal research, which we are going to handle in earnest. Thank you for watching and goodbye. I wish you the best.